Hello and welcome back to When the Night Comes. It has been a hot minute um, since I last um, recorded pretty much anything. Um, I was just not having great mental health times. I don't know if I am still, but I, I feel decent enough to record today, so might as well, right? Alright, let us jump back in. I stay up pondering the fact that we still haven't been given the name of the latest victim, and I wonder if Harry is keeping it from me for a reason. After my conversation with August, everything feels wrong. A quick, sharp pain rises in my temples. I feel that familiar presence lurking. Despite that, it would appear that no voices will visit me tonight. Because apparently nothing is sacred in this town, I managed to coke coax Piper's address out of Edna with very little persuasion. I head across the street, unsurprised that she lives so close to the tavern and as far away from headquarters as possible. Her house is small, but appears to have character, much like its owner. I take a deep breath and I knock. She looks surprised to see me, but her expression quickly softens. I wasn't expecting you, especially because I assumed you had no bloody idea where I live. Are you okay? A timid smile crosses my lips. I definitely don't think this is a conversation to be had in the street. Can we talk? Oh, sorry, of course. Come in. Her house is warm and inviting. The walls adorn with an abundance of gorgeous weaponry and various plants and brightly colored pillows litter the room. Your home is beautiful. Thank you. I've been lucky, really. I know not all hunters catch a break like I have. Plus, real estate in this shithole is cheap. We share a laugh, but I can't help but feel a sense of urgency to discuss things with her. I decide, I decide now is not the time for pleasantries or stalling. Cutting straight to the chase is the only way. I have some news about Aya. Her eyes widen, flicking to the side away from me. Aya! Please don't say what I think you're going to. I pull the sash from inside my coat and present it to her, but I'm quick to reassure. This was found in the woods, but that doesn't mean... She could still be alive, Piper. This has clearly been out there for a while. She reaches out and runs her hand over the ruined fabric, her fingers shaking. With a deep inhale, she withdraws, turning to sit upon the arm of her sofa. Why are you here? She looks so sad, like she's only thinking the worst. I don't blame her, and I can't imagine how frustrated she must feel with the hand she's been dealt. I wanted you to know that I spoke to August last night. They were quite honest with me about everything, really. Oh, were they? Hmm. I suppose they told you why I was demoted. I acted without rational thought. I was so angry. I offer her a smile, trying to catch her gaze. I may or may not have been caught doing exactly as you did. You didn't. I nod, feeling a little smug now that the fear of being reprimanded by my enforcer has dissipated. I broke into Augustus Willenheim's office and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. You've got guts. I'll give you that. I shrug, brushing it off. I'm grateful that the mood has shifted to something that feels a little lighter. You know, August regrets how everything happened. They seemed wistful. I think they miss your friendship. She frowns deeply, fiddling with the edge of her tunic. They hurt me. I think it'll take me a while to get over that. It wasn't even about the punishment. It was that they didn't believe me. You worked with someone for all that time, but when it came down to it, they thought I'd gone mad. Why would I make up such a thing? Everyone jokes about us and our instincts, but they don't understand. When we feel something, we really feel it, you know? I nod because I do know. Whatever lies within us that grants us our abilities is something we cannot shake or ignore. If we sense someone is in pain or if they're scared, we feel it in kind. If we love, we love fully. We can, if we can feel that something feels off, it usually is. They employ us to do what we do for a reason. I wish they'd have a better understanding of what or how we feel. She scoffs a quiet laugh, rolling her eyes and offering me a small smile. If only... If August wishes to make amends, I welcome their apology. But it will take me a while to trust them again. 
I was humiliated and betrayed by one of my only friends. I got some begging to do. Now that I'd like to see. <laughs> Shit, me too. I'll get you a front row seat if it ever happens, alright? Deal. Now I have a proposition. Oh? I want to go into the dungeons. She stares at me blank, expressionless. You fucking what? Are you absolutely mad? Fancying a demotion too, are you? Well, let me tell you, it's not all it's cracked up to be. I throw her a look and she smirks. You're serious then? Well, well, Raven, I'm impressed. So come on then, what's this plan? I'm still putting the pieces together. You inspired me though. Good to know some good comes out of my suffering, I suppose. Do you have any tips? Any kinks you encountered on your journey? The fact that I didn't even get to the door would indicate that I failed pretty miserably, wouldn't you say? The rewards. The regards. It's pretty impossible, unless... Unless? Well, you know Ezra, don't you? That witch is more than a pretty face. Speak to him. See if you can convince him to help. She's right. I've seen him use wards in his shop, and from what I saw of his magic the other day. You're a genius. She shrugs as if that's the most obvious statement I could have made. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> when you're ready, you know I've got your back. Always. Upon entering the shop, I find chaos. Sorry, I've read that. In probably the little opposite way I should have, but I thought it would be funnier to say chaos. I spot Ezra frantically gesturing an omen, the demon's tail tightly coiled. I'm wary of approaching him after our little incident yesterday, instead of instead of choosing to observe from afar. I manage to catch Ezra's eye and he throws me a sympathetic look. He's stressed, his hands full of bandages and potions. He mutters something quick and sharp under his breath to Omen, who then turns and stares at me with wide, sorry eyes as the witch disappears through his purple curtain. If I ask what's going on, will you give me an answer? Oi. The question seems to catch him by surprise, and he looks away, his lips pursed. He doesn't seem to have forgotten his outburst with me yesterday, or his abrupt departure. Good. It isn't my intention to trip him with a reminder, but just as well that he remembers. Did you bring someone in who was hurt? Brown eyes snap to me almost instantly, and Owen moves as though to step between me and the entrance to Ezra's back room, then catches himself in the middle and forcibly drops his arms to his sides. He opens his mouth, stammers without speaking, and his shoulders droop in defeat. A little spark that might have caught on the bandage roll in his hand peters out. Yes, but maybe you shouldn't see her right now. I mean... He licks his lips, a flick of his black tongue visible. It seems so eerily out of place on a face so painfully human in its distress. At least let Ezra see to her first. He needs some space when he works his magic. Are you hurt? Omen blinks at me for a moment, uncomprehending. Had the thought that he might be the one who was hurt not crossed his mind at all? Evidently not. His mouth goes round and he blushes, looking away and shaking his head. But then he smiles and holds the medical supplies closer. I'm fine. It's her I'm worried about. Of course, the guest. I glance at the door leading to the back, and after a moment of concentration, I can pick up on it too. A hint of power. One not unlike Omen's own. Another demon. This town is becoming a little too crowded, isn't it? I decide to keep my faith in Omen for now, however, and smile at him as reassuringly as I can. I'm sure she will be alright. Ezra is tending to her, after all. At the reminder, Omen visibly relaxes. Yeah, you're right, of course. He's very good at this. He took care of me when I came here. His words peter out. Omen looks down at his arms and at the wall, then at me pensively. His tail lashes back and forth, his body tense, and for one dangerous moment, I wonder what he'll do. But my hand stays off my weapon this time, and his burgeoning power stays contained within that slim, fleshy guise. We look at each other until I feel we come to a silent understanding. Omen sighs, his shoulders falling. Hunter, I owe you an explanation, I think. 
I owe you the truth. He fidgets, looking anywhere but me, before stealing himself and meeting my eyes. I relax my stance as much as I can, encouraging. No use pushing when Omen seems willing to speak, but I'm glad to hear what that I might finally be getting answers. Tell me. He smiles, eyes soft, appreciative. Then he takes another deep breath and begins. Two years ago, I came to Inaris. That is, I came to stay in Inaris. After a disagreement with my sire, my father. His eyes flicker around the room almost nervously, and I find myself straining to detect any eavesdropping presence. But there is none. Omen seems to find the same thing because his shoulders droop again. You know what I am. I suppose you've already guessed. He sighs. Your people call him Lucifer, I think. The Fallen Divine. The Lord of Hells. It takes me a moment to process what he said. Demon lore is plentiful and easily accessible when you're a hunter. Even in our early years at the Academy, we poured over detailed logs of their fiendish hierarchies, favorite vices to exploit, patterns of their appearances. I would damn well hope I know who the Lord of Hells is. Oh, that is very nice. Almond's brown eyes widen, his jaws going slack in surprise. The glamour truly is something, and I'm starting to wonder if he learned it from the witch behind the curtains. It is? He coughs. That was sarcasm, wasn't it? Yes. That was not sarcasm. No, it was not. Something else hits me. Our sire? Owen bites his lip and looks away, then he nods curtly, eyes flicking to the door leading into the shop. Well then, does your father know that you're here in the mortal realm? Can he find you? A terrible thought crosses my mind. The burned bodies, the hunters targeted. No. The vehemence of his denial is startling. I quickly hold up my hands for peace, but Owen isn't paying attention. He's shaking his head vigorously, trembling. No. No, that can't be him. Him or any of his minions. I would have known. I would have stopped them. His brown eyes are glowing with fire as he stares at me pleadingly. Literal simmering flames. I can feel the fire in his core standing here, far enough away, and now that I know where it comes from, the familiarity makes sense. That's one hell of a secret to hold on to. And who was that in the back then? One more colossal fact to add to the messy little mountain of information I've been gathering since stepping foot into this mad town. What else is new by now? I believe you, Omen. Omen's shoulders droop in relief, and I feel something tense inside myself unclench as well. It needs not end badly. It will not. Besides, this case would have been closed far faster if it was run-of-the-mill demons messing about. Right. Oma closes his eyes and says something too quiet for me to hear, and he breathes in, breathes out, and slowly makes his way to the counter. He sets all the items in his arms down, there, with such deliberate deliberateness. Why can I say that word? I know he is doing so to calm his nerves. Something sneaks through still. I see a flicker of flame about his hair, an intensity to his aura. But only briefly. The pressure fades as Omen raises his head. He doesn't look at me as he speaks. I think I'll just head outside for some fresh air. Are you sure? Omen smiles at me over his shoulder, the curve of his mouth tense. It's for the best. I don't want her to see me like this. Rattled and angry. She's my sister. She doesn't deserve it. He trails off, staring into the distance for a moment. Then he shakes his head and makes for the door, only adding one last thing before he steps outside. Will you go and say hello to her? I'm sure Elaine will find you quite lovely. She's so cute. The second I lay my eyes on her, it's more than a little obvious that she's truly related to Omen. Maybe even his twin, unless the glamour is simply fooling me. Ezra has a poultice carefully pressed to her dainty hand, a pile of gauze covered in a thick black ichor discarded upon the counter by his side. She blinks at me once, twice. Her eyes are big and brown, and every bit as earnest as Omen's. Hello! Her voice is disarmingly sweet, almost musical even. 
I smile at her politely, looking to Ezra for a little guidance. Elaine, this is Raven. Raven, this is Elaine, Omen's twin sister. Ah, yes. I assume Ezra was just as unaware of his existence as I am, but he's polite enough to stay calm and focused. As friendly and as hospitable as ever. It's nice to meet you, Elaine. Oh, um, you too. Elaine narrows her eyes at me for a brief moment, shaking her head. She looks terrified. She addresses Ezra, but she certainly keeps her eyes on me on my weapon. I... Where is Armorus? I look at Ezra, my confusion quite evident. Armorus? Ah, uh, yes, that. Her face lights up when I say his name, but I gather she doesn't fully understand my trepidation. Ezra turns to address the demon, patting her hand gently. He he's just outside and you're all healed up, but I do think you should go and see your brother now. Okay, yes. Yes, I should. Ezra releases her, throwing me a sorry look over his shoulder as he turns to quickly dispose of the mess of medical supplies. It was lovely to meet you, Raven. Her demeanor is delightful, and I'm still slowly processing exactly what her brother just told me. Yes, you too. She glances at me briefly before shyly inverting her gaze, turning to meekly part the curtains that lead into the shop. Second she's gone, a tall, pale figure bursts through the back door. He looks shocked to see me, but quickly recovers. Is she healed? She's fine, and she's with her brother. I, I suggest you give him some space for the time being. Ezra's words are final and somewhat stern, and Armorous quickly wilts under his vibrant green gaze, his eyes still glowing, still lightly glowing from whatever magic he's just performed. I don't really know how to unpack all of this. What happened to her, and why are you so desperate to be by her side? He stares longingly at the curtain, and Elaine's voice quiet on the other side. Then I remember the note on the stoop of the ibeck, the little heart. Zeshewa. Oh, well, I'm courting her, you see. We're t together. She was attacked last night by it. The one that's been getting to your kind, I think. Ezra and I share a look, doing little to hide our shock. It? A as in the creature? Armorous closes his eyes, sighing heavily, then he nods. Y yes If you need to tell us something, we can help. Elaine didn't need to get hurt, so if you know where this thing is... He looks at me, then back at Ezra, his throat bobbing as he swallows thickly. He's quite clearly battling with the idea of divulging any more information. Armorous, it's okay, you can trust us. We just want to help. They're right. No one will know what you tell us. We just want people to be safe. He sighs again, his shoulders sinking in defeat. I just want her to be safe. What well, we can see you care for her a great deal, and we want that too. His ice blue eyes flicker, qu quickly flicker between each of us, and it's the most animated I've seen him. Why are you being so nice to me? My sister and I. He trails off, almost looking right through me. If you have information about the creature, we need to know. People are dying, so I find it hard to hold your beliefs against you if you if you can offer assistance. Very well. Aurora has been sneaking out at night as of late. That's not exactly uncommon for her, but I, but I believe she's doing more than satisfying her baser urges. Ezra looks away, covering a quiet cough with his hand. <laughs> We don't have time to unpack all of that, but I'll sort it away for later. What do you suspect? I suspect nothing. I know that she's feeding it. Or something, at least. F feeding it? Mm-hmm. He seems unfazed, startlingly so. She may seem cruel and cold, but Aurora has a good heart. She cares for the creatures and makes sure they're safe. Can I see Elaine now? Can you maybe elaborate a little on that first? He shrugs, sighing again. It is what it is. I don't dictate to her what she can and cannot do. I find myself losing interest in her preachings. I just want to keep Elaine safe now. Ideally, we'll leave this wretched place for good, but... Her and Omen have only just reunited. Would she be so quick to leave him? 
Maybe not. I think it's best for both of you to stay here and lay low. I'm not sure why the creature attacked her if it hasn't attacked anything inhuman so far. He looks at me, fixes my gaze with perfect confidence. How do you know? A chill rolls along my spine, but I shake it off. You're right, I don't. I'd really like to leave now. You can leave, and I need you to promise me something. He narrows his gaze. Go on. Watch Aurora, and the second you see her do anything out of the ordinary, you find me. I will ensure Elaine is safe, I swear to you, but your cooperation is essential. I see Ezra shifting nervously out of the corner of my eyes, but I stand my ground. Armors continues to assess me. Fine. I will seek you out, and I will watch my sister. Farewell, Hunter. Which? Well, that was interesting. I anticipate some commotion from behind the curtains, but I hear nothing but silence. Interesting is putting it lightly. H how are you, anyway? I have a quick laugh because that question feels far too casual for the amount of information I've digested in the last forever. Tired, confused, the usual. I, I suppose I haven't done much to help with that, have I? I wanted to apologize for not being totally honest with you and for making your life a little harder than necessary. You already have so much on your plate. He seems genuine, and aside from his odd behavior yesterday, I have no reason not to trust Ezra. I spoke to August last night, Piper this morning. They know about the sash. Fear flashes across his features, but I quickly reassure him. It's fine, Ezra. They're on our side. They want to help. E even Gus? Yes, even August. A are you sure you're not magic? Because that seems like an impossible task. I shake my head profusely. No magic here. His smile grows and he seems to relax exponentially. It's nice to see. Then let's talk. He takes a deep breath. The reason I was so hesitant to discuss Aya, or the Enforcers for that matter, is because I used to work for them. You were an Enforcer? Hell no. I went in and I assisted in the infirmary or morgue whenever they needed an extra pair of hands. Healers, good healers, are few and far between around here. It's what I always wanted to do, to apply my skills where most needed. Helping those who dedicate their lives to ensuring our safety was an honor. The murders began and I examined the first body. If you can even call it that in the state that it was in. I listened intently, taking all of this in. A little perplexed, a little caught off guard. Something shifted within the headquarters after that. They started treating me differently, called me in less. And then, when I was there, they kept me clear of any hunters. It became quite clear they didn't want me there any longer. Information was being kept from me, important notes about the victims I was supposed to be examining. The Aya incident happened, then another dead hunter turned up, and they revoked my access. They, they took away all of my notes. Notes? He nods, glancing over the kitchen counter. I, I may have had Piper retrieve them for me. I if you'd like to take them, there's not much, but you're welcome to them. I'm taking the notes. Yes, I'll take them. He opens one of the kitchen drawers, pulling out a pile of parchment. Then he discards what looks like a fake wooden bottom. The notebook is nestled safely beneath it. Here. I tuck it away inside my jacket for later. So why were you afraid to tell me this? You did nothing wrong. You were helping people. He offers me a sorry gaze, his brow furrowed, fingers curled into fists at his side. They don't like people talking about it, about the deaths. Many of us have our suspicions now, and they know. And I think they'd do anything to keep what's happening quiet. Like not telling me who the latest victim is. I exactly. I, I wasn't even sure if I could trust Gus. But I wanted to so badly that I pushed my apprehension aside. You were right to trust them. They're on our side. They're scared too. Oh, Gus. I, I just want all of this to be over. What are we going to do? I smile and Ezra's expression lights up. Y you have a plan? I have a plan. I can't do this without you. I look deep into his eyes hoping I can wash away some of the weight that he carries. The toll this has taken on him is obvious. 
I can't do this without you, Ezra. I need you. And anything you need, Raven. I trust you. I smile, taking his hand when he offers it, and he squeezes mine tightly. Together. T together. Piper and I are going to the dungeons to see if we can locate Aya. If we talk to her, I think we might have a start. Everything leads back to when she was arrested, as far as I can tell. H how on earth are you going to get down there without being caught? That's where you come in. It may involve you and August working together. D does Gus know about this little plan of yours? I grimace, waving my hands in a so-so gesture. Partially? You're lucky I trust you. And I'm here for you. Just tell me when and where. Thank you, Ezra. Now how can I find Finn? Well, why, a secret passageway, of course. You're in the right place. He bends down, kicking aside a colorful rug to reveal the hidden hatch. He creaks loudly when he opens it, a gust of cold, stale wind rising from its depths. Walk for about ten minutes, and then when you see candlelight, it's the third door on the left. Don't be alarmed by any vampires you stumble across. They're all friendly. I nod, taking a deep breath. I lower myself into the hatch, gazing up at him with a smile. See you around. The incessant drip, drip, drip of water guides me th forward through the darkness. The darkness, Jackie. The stench of damp and decay fills my nostrils as I sink deeper into the corridor of the catacombs. The pitch black path is long and winding, and the only sound I can hear is the tap of my boots on the wet stone. Eventually, I see candlelight flickering ahead, and it would appear that I finally found life. Well, kind of. I remember to look for the third door on the left, just as Ezra had instructed, but as I approach, I find it wide open. I peek inside in the stark contrast between the literal tomb outside and what I find in what is most definitely Finn's quarters is astounding. Before I get the chance to take in the view, a cool breeze brushes past me, ruffling my hair and sending goose flesh prickling across my sand. A small, darkly clad girl appears before me in a flash, her eyes the brightest crimson as they bore into me. She stands with her head tilted and a toothy grin crossing dark lips. Are you lost, human? She stares me down, wide-eyed and clearly, quite clearly trying to intimidate me, but she seems playful. I'm here to see Finn. She relaxes the sound of his name, and her striking gaze sweeps over me like a caress. She shrugs, pursing her lips. So you're the one he won't shut up about, huh? Well, you do smell good, I guess. Smell good? I'm... Is Finn here? She licks a fang. I notice how similar some of her more human quirks are to his. She's far less poised than him, but I almost feel like that may be on purpose. I'm in Finn's territory here. Neutral territory. So I quell the desire to be defensive, even though her eyes are the color of a creature who drinks human blood. He's somewhere. Here. Around. Doing. Stuff. Hopeful. Her smile widens. She turns to poke at a crystal decanter of whiskey that sits nestled in the corner of one of his many bookcases. Are you part of the clan? A quick nod, almost too quick to catch. I am. She pours the rich amber liquid into a glass, swirls it, sniffs it with a dramatic grimace, and sets it aside untouched. Her nose is still crinkled and barely disguised disgust when she looks at me again. I wish that thing you're looking for would stop killing hunters, you know. Besides, because that means that more of your type will come. Then more enforcers, which is the last thing we need in this shitty town. I hear footsteps, loud ones that echo off the stonework in the hallway. Raven. I suspect he knew I was here, but his shock is charming nonetheless. It looks to the girl who throws him a decidedly wicked wolfish grin, the picture of innocence. Raven, are you being nice? The girl, the other Raven, shrugs, sidling up to him and resting her head on his shoulder. She rolls her eyes hard enough I'm surprised they don't fall back into her skull. Yes, Dad. Finn's face drops, his eyes narrowed. I get the impression that if he could blush, his cheeks would be the prettiest shade of pink. I stifle a laugh, and with obvious delight, Raven notices. Raven? She laughs, a sound loud and obnoxious, but somehow still charming. She shoves him playfully, but Finn remains stern. Are you going to introduce me to your friend? 
The suggestive waggle of her eyebrows doesn't go unnoticed, and Finn sighs heavily, offering me an apologetic smile. <laughs> Raven. This is Raven. She's my... I'm his kid. There's a low, exasperated rumble of a warning in Finn's throat, and I find myself enjoying the way he bristles in her presence. Finn throws her a death glare, and she proceeds to look guilty, but just a little. He raises a single dark brow at her, and after a quiet scoff, she enthusiastically steps forward and offers me her hands. It's really nice to meet you, Raven. You being in town has given Grumpy Pants here something to do other than mope, at least. I do not mope. Raven rolls her eyes, and I finally take her hand. Her grip is firm, and I wonder if she might be trying to unnerve me when her startling eyes widen exponentially. Hurt him, and I'll eat you. Got it? I open my mouth to respond, but before I get the chance, she's laughing again. Finn looks mortified, and he carefully pries her hand for mine and ushers her towards the door. It's time for you to go, I think. Raven pouts, raising both of her hands in defense. I was joking, obviously. I like them already. She offers me a little wave and raises, rises onto her tiptoes to press a kiss to Finn's cheek. He looks at her with unabashed fondness, a, smile, a small smile creeping onto his lips. Go. Say hello to Lux for me and be good. He runs his hand over her shorn scalp and, he, and she swats at him playfully, scoffing much like a teenager would an embarrassing parent. I'll do more than say hello. Bye, Raven. He gives another disapproving rumble, and Finn almost looks like he wants to chase her to administer another pep talk, but, another pep talk, but he stops himself. And with that, she's gone, the door slamming loudly and shaking in its frame. Finn groans, running an iron hand over his face as he walks to grab the whiskey Raven had poured him. She's interesting. She's your... He sips his drink. She's a pain in the ass is what she is. But I suppose she's my pain in the ass. I sired her, so she's my responsibility. She jokes about me being her father, but... Well, I suppose I am, in a way. He takes a small sip of whiskey, savoring the taste for a moment, for he speaks. Though I prefer brother. Father just makes me sound so... Old? <laughs> His laugh is charming. Yes. Old. She tends to look after me much more than I look after her. She's a good kid. I'd be lost without her. I nod, observing him quietly as he sets down his glass. Sire bonds are powerful, and it's interesting to observe such a casual, healthy dynamic. Did you choose to turn her? He frowned, shaking his head. Well, no, not exactly. It's complicated, it but I made a choice that I'll have to live with forever. Literally. I'd seen too many die at the hand of my sire. Something about her struck me. She planned to leave her for dead. But I couldn't let that happen. He smiles and it's painfully earnest. We were kindred spirits, I guess. As much as I have regret for cursing her with immortality, she's the closest thing I have to a family. Now, what brings you to my neck of the underworld? He leans back against his desk. I have a plan, and I think I might need your help to execute it. He tilts his head, curiously, curiosity obviously piqued. A plan, hmm? I do love those. Tell me, what can I do? Don't you want to know the finer details first? He shrugs, running his tongue over his bottom lip. Makes no difference to me. I trust you implicitly. If it means I can help you in any way, I'm all ears. Just tell me where you need me. Piper and I are going to attempt to break into the dungeons below, beneath HQ. His pointy ears flicker, almost flattening against his head before they put themselves to rights. He can't seem to mask his surprise nor his apparent interest. The dungeons, hmm? He whistles, scuffing his boot against the stone floor. I can help you, but I may have a favor of my own to ask you if you're bold enough to venture down there. I narrow my eyes at him, contemplating if I want to tangle myself into yet another web. What is it? He pushes away from the desk, standing tall. An important member of my clan has gone missing, and I'm positive that they have him. As I'm sure you know, any trust for the enforcers is wavering. I want my friend back. He's done nothing to warrant being thrown in a dungeon. 
His hands ball into fists at his side, his prosthetic flaring brightly before it fades into its usual dormant, dull glow. How do you know that they have him? I don't. They have an excellent defense system that prevents any of us from detecting him, no matter how close we manage to get. He would not just abandon us. He's either detained or dead, and if it's the latter... I just want to know. You sure... You sure you wouldn't just leave? Your clan isn't like others. Maybe he wanted to change? He looks frustrated. He runs his fingers through his hair, leaving it messy. The arrow wouldn't just leave. I know he wouldn't. I trust him more than anyone else in my clan. Even Raven. We both suffered at the hands of Levi for centuries. We were healing from that together. He was the only friend I had when I was with Levi. And he saved me more than once. I owe him this. If he's ash and bone in a forest somewhere, then so be it. But if he's okay, then I must save him. The only family creatures like me have are the ones that you find, so... I intend to keep them safe as long as I can. Why do you think they would take Fierro specifically if you're so sure he's innocent? He shrugs, clearly quite confident in his theory. Because he's valuable, he's an empath, a powerful one. If he stole something he wasn't supposed to, or even if they just managed to overpower him and get him alone. I rarely let my clan members patrol by themselves, regardless of our supposedly stable relationship with the enforcers of this town. But I was stupid, and Fierro is a good sweet talker. He sent someone in distress in the woods, so I allowed it. Therefore, if anything has happened to him, it's my fault. Finn prides himself on being the opposite of his sire, and I can see that this is eating away at him. You can't place the blame on yourself. You didn't know. Plus, if he is as valuable as you say he is. His eyes light up when they meet mine, his fingers twitching upon the surface of the desk. Then they could be using him, so he's still alive. I smile in return, tilting my head this way and that. Well, ish. <laughs> he laughs, and I can't help but join him. So you'll check for me. I nod. I will. The information on Finn's sire sparse outside of the fact that he was notorious and cruel, and I wonder how such a seemingly kind man could have followed him for that long. Call it more of a curiosity. Do you mind talking about him? About Levi? Finn grimaces, folding his arms across his broad chest. His posture loses his usual confidence. I suppose. Take a seat upon his bed as he, pull as he pulls out his desk chair. First thing I can think to ask him is loaded, but I need to understand. Why did you stay with him for so long? He looks at me wide-eyed for a beat before he manages to formulate a response. I don't know that I can answer that. I still truly do not know. He was good at making sure you had nothing left to go home to. So he was all that I had. I'm not the kind of man who does well with loneliness. A wry smile crosses his lips, but Finn looks impossibly sad. What did he take from you? He swallows thickly, casting his gaze to the side. Everything. He took my fiancé, killed him right in front of me, before he took my own life. I was an orphan. I didn't exactly have many friends. Gilbrelo was truly all I had. He destroyed our home, all of our memories. He even took my name from me. He took it all. And he did everything to make sure that I needed him. I followed him like a lost puppy for centuries. Did you ever try to escape when you found others? He nods. Many times. I had a few periods of freedom, but he always found me. He tended to collect vampires with abilities like Fierro and myself. Maybe to make up for the fact that, aside from his advanced age, he was truly unremarkable. Yeah, take that. You fucking sucked, you bitch-ass loser. And now? He's dead and you're free. You seem to be managing well for someone who endured all of that. He sighs, rubbing the back of his neck with his iron hands. I'm trying to shape myself into the man I always wanted to be. Before the whole being undead thing. I try not to dwell on things that happened to me. I was bitter for long enough. But I 
cannot change any of it. All I can do is be the opposite of what you wanted me to be. I smile as I observe him. I register how comfortable I feel in his home. I thought of stepping into the den of a clan before all of this would have set me on edge, but now... You're doing a great job, Finn. His mouth curls into an earnest grin. Thank you, Raven. I give you permission to kick my arse if I ever dare step out of line. Duly noted. So what is it you'd like me to do, exactly? Well, no one knows this town quite as well as you. I was hoping you'd have some little secret little passageway tucked away for me to use. There are wards and other nasty little tricks in place to stop people like you, like us, getting in. I'll worry about that. Now, about the passageway? His grin is wicked, and I think I have my answer. I'm your guy. Just say when and I'll be there. If you need anything else, just come running. I bid Fen farewell, and now I only need to find one more friend. I saved the most stubborn till last. Alcar is waiting for me when I return to the wolf. It doesn't surprise me anymore when I catch his eye across the tavern where he's been nursing a mug of ale, clearly pouting. That the pout disappears when he see me, sees me surely counts for something. But the way his lips thin instantly makes me think perhaps not. He gets up, movement slow and deliberate, and I remain by the door for a moment, wondering if, hilariously, he's somehow trying not to scare me. Took you long enough. Just wondering if the bad shit got to you. Do you need something? Yes, actually. Elkar rubs the back of his neck and gives me a critical one over, frown deepening, and he glances behind the shoulder of the sparsely populated tavern. Three or four people lounging about seem deeply engaged with their own conversation, but I nod an understanding. My room? Ha! Elkar barks a short, scornful laugh. So your superior can come knocking on the door and catch us? Not a chance. Are you saying I'm trying to ambush you? He frowns at me, his tail flicking and then going still. His voice is low and steady when he answers. No, I'm not saying that, but I'm not keen on taking chances right now. Tell me you agree. As much as I loathe to abandon the promise of a horizontal, not a bare rock surface to lie down on, I close my eyes and try to process the day. He's right. And if Alcar has any more information, any more at all, I want to hear it. I need to hear it. Alright then, where? The woods! The deep dark woods where I stumbled across a nasty youngling no more than a day ago? Alcar rolls his eyes. Would you prefer the graveyard where those damn Woodridge twins can probably hear every word we say? Not all of the woods are dangerous. I would know. I lived there. Now, I ask that you trust me. I incline my head in understanding and step aside, inviting him to take his leave through the door first. Alcar doesn't move immediately. He stays where he is, his arms crossed, and he regards me with a strange expression. It's not unreadable, but almost as though he doesn't quite know what expression he should be making. Is something the matter? You're one trusting motherfucker, aren't you? I scowl at him. You and your friends in this lovely town aren't giving me a lot of choices. I accept another eye roll, a scoff, a dismissive wave, and said Alcar inclines his head and there's something almost like guilt in his grimace. Let's go. Unaris is a cold and lonely shell of its daylight form tonight, and I have to almost run to keep up with how quickly, though sure-footedly, Alcar moves through back alleys. It chills things into my bones, and unbidden, I wish I wasn't here. I wish I wasn't following a half-werewolf into the dark unknown towards more mystery. Omen's confession is still ringing in my ears, as do so many other things. Did you know that Omen is... Okar shakes his head, his wolf eyes flattening. His wolf ears flattening, not here. That would be wild if his eyes could flatten. <laughs> Another turn when we stepped beyond the town's boundary. Trees loom above us, moonlight flooding th through the bare branches to afford us some light. Alcar leads me to a little further until the roofs of the houses are barely visible and turns toward me. A while ago, I got into a fight with one of your hunters. He jerks his chin towards the town. Well, not one of yours exactly, I suppose. Since you just got here and all, but one of theirs. Some bloke. I don't even remember his face all that well. I was... 
Elkar pauses for a moment, rubbing his chin almost nervously. His eyes narrowed, but he shakes himself of it and continues. I was... It was during a full moon. I had uh, an argument with my sister. Didn't go well. He grimaces at the memory. And when I transform, especially if I'm upset, my control isn't as good as it could be. But I know I didn't kill him. But if Danwell remembered that, if you ripped a man apart with your own claws and teeth, but when I came to, he knocked me out, I guess. You hunters and your annoying little gadgets. Your enforcer friends were already swarming over us like hornets. But there was no blood. Not mine, not his. That doesn't mean you didn't hurt him. Alcar gives me a look. Okay, smartass. The point is that he vanished. Poof. They, the enforcers, dragged me off to their fun little dungeon and kept me there for fuck knows how long. A week, I think. Maybe more. And then they just poked and prodded me a bit. Then they let me go. Felt like they wanted to do more. Like they had plans for me, but... Maybe it was too dangerous to just snuff me, I guess. I know too many people. Ezra, Finn. But here's a question for you. What do you do when a creature hurts a hunter so bad it apparently isn't walking around anymore? I press my lips together. Nothing pleasant, I know that much. Assuming the creature in question was allowed to escape with their life at all. And sometimes they are let go. Marks that are too delicately tied to the order of things to be freely snuffed, as Alcar has so elegantly put it. But surely if he wounded a hunter so terribly, he would have still been in the dungeons. Perhaps Finn or Ezra parlayed for your release. But Alcar is shaking his head. They didn't. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you hunters don't get retirement leave till you can't walk on two legs anymore. And even then... Well, there are always prosthetics. Alcar barks a sharp, bitter laugh and shakes his head. But neither he and I know, either. La, ah. but neither he nor I find humor in it. I know. He's quiet for a moment, running a hand through his hair, messing with his clothes, fidgeting, nervous. I step back a pace, let him collect himself. No use pushing him for anything now. Not when he's already so open with telling me everything he knows. I didn't kill that hunter. I didn't. I wouldn't forget something like that, and I... Enough to never do it by accident. Never. Elkar's frown is deep. His words are as quietly fierce as they are pleading. Then what happened to that hunter? Do you not know who he is at all? Elkar scowls at me, though his tail swishes back and forth in chagrin. There's enough of you lot running around this place, and I don't keep an eye on everybody, okay? Especially not that one, I guess. Since I don't even remember his scent that well. He must have been forgettable. A small shiver goes down my spine. A hunter who isn't well-remembered or well-known vanishing so thoroughly? It wouldn't be the first time. It won't be the first time, it won't be the last. My rank weighs like a burden on my soul, like a burden on my soul. Hunters wield power, after all, and with power comes politics. You make it far by being good at what you do, and by keeping your head down to one degree or another, or you find a clandestine way to, clandestine way to make your queries, or you fuck up and you disappear. But what politics would this forgettable man have served? Lunaris doesn't suffer from intricate power balances. Lieutenant General reigns supreme, and that's it. Does Lieutenant General, General Lieutenant General, <laughs> does Lieutenant General Addington know of this? Yeah, I think he was the one campaigning. For, sorry, wrong voice. Yeah, I think he was the one campaigning for my release. I owe him one, I think. I guess. Ah, of course. Addington most of all wouldn't have wanted to destroy peace with the local creatures. Until he has a surefire way of removing them with impunity, anyhow, I suppose. I have another question. 
Were you aware that Omen comes from hell? Alcar frowns at me, then squints and snorts. <laughs> of course. Where else would he be coming from? The general store? <laughs> I hope he doesn't hear the sound of my teeth gnashing as loudly as I hear it. With the way his ears suddenly stand up in the cackle, I know he's seen something. I meant, did you know that he's the son of the literal devil? You were the one who didn't ask. You weren't giving me a chance to, as I recall. And why exactly should I have told you? Oh, by the way, we've got a demon prince in town. He's easily spooked, but don't you worry about that because he's harmless. Like that would fly. He pauses for a moment to consider his own words, then shrugs. That was his secret to tell. And he didn't have anything to do with the mess that's been cropping up around here, including that fact. Besides... Ezra's the one who chose to offer him a place to stay. Same as he offered to help me, help Finn, help anyone who so much as looked like they needed it. Omen came to his door asking for aid. Why would he be any different than any of us? Than you, who he took in that night, too. I can think of a few ways a hunter might be different from all of those things, but I understand the spirit of it. Omen has good, loyal friends in this town. I understand. Alcar inclines his head in acknowledgement, his eyes sharp. It's more force than I've ever seen from him. Good. Then he chuckles and leans away, signifying that the conversation is at an end. See you tomorrow? Where are you going off to so soon? Back into my hovel before the big, handsome vampire comes to scold me about staying out in the cold. What else? Excuse my nosiness, but you look like you've seen some hell yourself. Not just the prince of hell. I frown. Am I that obviously rattled? But now that it's been said, I do feel the building headache behind my eyes. Not from the ghost of James alone, but from, well, everything. Alcar is staring at me again, tilting his head this way and that, and making a show out of squinting at me. Hmm, yeah. Definitely look floored. Fit for bed. Well, don't stray too far. I might need you tomorrow. I have a plan. A plan, hmm? Well, don't worry too much. I will be a stone's throw away, whether you like it or not. When you need me, you need me. Until then, later. He disappears into the tree line as sure-footed as ever, and once again I'm left alone in this damn forest. I begin to wake my way. I begin to make my way back to the wolf. My mind reeling again, as it always seems to be these days. Though I feel hopeful, my plan seems plausible. The little team of misfit helpers I've managed to assemble more than capable of carrying it alongside me. I think. I smiled myself, feeling a little lighter. Then, a rustle. Something moving in the tree line a little too close to the edge of town for my liking. I step forward, my footsteps quiet and assured as I advance back towards the thicker forest. Another rustle, closer this time. Then it lumbers into view. It's hunched over in misshape and with long, gangly limbs that look out of place on its relatively normal-sized body. A single twisted horn grows out of his head and I spot three eyes. The third seems new and underdeveloped and it melts crudely above the existing let's stalk it. It's covered in patches of scraggly fur and scales and in some places its skin is entirely burned off. An amalgamation of mismatched parts and pieces that look like they don't belong. That cloudy gaze meets mine, and merely, and merely looking at it gives me a headache. There's this weak demonic aura, aura that makes my body beg me to look away. And something hits me, something that makes me hesitate to draw my weapon. I cannot place this feeling of complacency, of ease, and nor can I fight it. If this how my comrades were killed so easily? Does it have some kind of power over us that makes us freeze, become immobile? Or... Is it the dull ache of familiarity that settles in my gut that makes me pause? Feeling that I shouldn't harm it, that it deserves empathy, mercy. It opens its crooked jaw, melted sinew and mottled skin stretching and splitting to reveal a set of violent, jagged teeth. My body screams at me to fight, but my feet are firmly planted and stuck to the forest floor. My fingers won't move, my weapon is still frustratingly safe in its holster. It takes a purposeful step towards me with a low, rattling groan, its teeth bared. My heart races as I stare into its unfocused eyes, all three of them blinking out of sequence. 
There's a loud ringing in my ears. I've never felt like this before. My instincts are screaming, pulsing, dying for me to do something. Anything. And yet all I can apparently do is stare down my bitter end. Then, something washes over me and in a split second I gain perfect blinding clarity. Run. James. The creature takes another step and howls. A broken, blood-curdling screech. Run! I listen. Pick your out. Good answer. I so my body already knows where I need to go. Where I want to go, my feet carries me towards Ezra's shop. I don't look back, but I do hear the rustle of trees and the creature's maddened aura fading. It's heading back into the woods. The town is safe. For now. Though I'd rather not startle him, I find the back door to Ezra's shop open. I head inside without knocking, and I hear him standing behind me, a quiet mumble of my name as I turn the key in the lock. I check it quite. Check it twice. Raven, are you okay? He reaches for me and I quickly take his hands. His eyes are wide, my touch probably ice cold, and my whole body shaking. I can't recall the last time I ever felt like this. Maybe my first ever hunt, fresh out of school, but... This fear is consuming and I sense that it's artificial, a figment of whatever dreadful magic that thing has cast upon me. I saw it. What? Come and sit down. You're shaking. We head over to the tiny sofa, and the dull, mismatched glow of the tiny lights that hang above it bathe us in, in comforting shades of pink and blue. The light, the sight soothes me in an instant, and even Finn's obvious worry makes me feel infinitely calmer. He leans forward, taking my hand in his and pressing his fingers to my pulse. It thrums frantically. Ezra frowns. Well, what happened? I take a deep breath, feeling ridiculous and helpless, something I'm not used to. It was like nothing I've ever seen, and I've seen some shit. Well, at least you still have your humor. I shrug, thankful that the mood is a little lighter. It must have been it. I froze, like it put a spell on me. Paralyzed me. He laces our fingers together, now he's apparently satisfied with the pace of my pulse, squeezing gently. I I'm glad you're okay. His next breath comes in the form of a sharp exhale, his eyes squeeze shut. Ezra? The thought of anything happening to you terrifies me. I know it's silly, and I know you're more than capable, but I've come to care for you a great deal. I almost can't imagine what I'd be like without you. How ever did you manage to enchant me after I've only known you for such a short time? I look down at our joined hands, feeling a warmth in my chest. Something seems to bloom whenever Ezra touches me. Looks at me, even. I truly do feel like I've known him forever. The very first night, I was enchanted, too, without question. I don't know, but I feel it, too. I shift closer, our knees brushing. I let my hands wander, running up his forearm, his shoulders, cupping the curve of his jaw. He gratefully leans into my touch and smiles softly. You are so beautiful, Ezra. Y you say these things. I mean it. His tongue flicks out to wet his lips, my eyes following the movement. I can think of nothing that I want more in this moment than to press my mouth to his in a gentle kiss. The vivid green of his eyes is so bright as he fixes his gaze upon me. His smile grows, turning into something a little sly. It's almost as if he can hear the cogs turning in my mind and the desire to act is overwhelming. You can kiss me, you know. I'm sure he sees the way my brow raises. It's all the permission I require and the gleeful little noise Ezra makes of the first melding of our lips tells me he's pleased with my advances. At the first swipe of his tongue, I taste sugar just as I expected because everything about Ezra is sweet. I breathe into it, inhaling him, his fingers threading into my hair. He moves away slightly, tipping his head as I pepper his face with reverent kisses, the corner of his mouth, his cheeks, his jaw. Raven, 
I sit up staring him dead in the eyes and he bites his bottom lip. Well, since you asked so nicely. I search for her with the second kiss loud and little undignified with our enthusiasm, but he laughs against my lips nonetheless. We next break apart. We settle upon the sofa together with her fingers intertwined and smiles upon our faces. He's such a pretty man. <laughs> he catches me staring, his smile growing wider and even more beautiful by the second. His aura is distinctly calm, as it always seems to me, but there's something new about Ezra tonight. A certain sureness, something that tells me he knows that everything will be okay. That we have each other. I I'm so happy that you're here with me, Raven. We'll figure this thing out together. I promise you. Ezra makes me feel like I belong, like I have a home here. His warmth, his kindness, something steady and sure amidst all of this chaos. Not only that, but just knowing I have his support makes me feel unstoppable. I don't doubt for a second that we've got this. We will. I don't just have him and no longer am I alone, but I have a family. Everything is going to be okay. Alright, we are going to leave things here for now. If you've been enjoying the game, if you've been enjoying the series, um, if you missed me while I was gone, um, feel free to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave a comment if you're feeling generous. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.